There's one rendering software that came up with tons of exciting features in the past year, like real-time caustics, AI-generated texture maps, AI atmosphere match, it's constantly improving global illumination, and so much more. I'm talking about D5 Render. 2023 was a very good year for D5 with lots of new features the community was asking for. This video will be a mix of showing you the top features while showing you how to create the exterior render animation you saw at the beginning of the video. If all of this sounds exciting to you, stick around and let's get started. I'll be using 3ds Max for this scene. And since D5 Render now supports real-time synchronization with their latest plugin, it's a perfect match. I can build my scene, drop some assets, and then when I'm ready, I can click on this button to send it to D5 Render. You can see how the live sync works between both software. Let's say I want to make this terrain a little bit more flat. You can see how I'm editing the changes show up in real-time in D5 Render. And not only that, you can also create a new camera here directly in 3ds Max. Adjust all the settings you can and then click again on the Refi Render plugin and select Send Scenes. Now you can see how the same camera was applied inside D5. And next is constantly improving GI. In version 2.4, D5 Render improved the global illumination. The new GI algorithm enhances the lighting in poorly lit scenes by increasing the GI bounces of the skylight. This change has a profound impact on the final result, as demonstrated in a side-by-side -side comparison with the previous version 2.3. As you can see, in the comparison, the 2.4 version fills the space with light much more effectively, resulting in lighter shadows and a more evenly lit scene. This eliminates the need to rely on additional light sources, such as area lights by the windows, to fill the space with light. Next is AI Atmosphere Match. Now, starting with the light of our scene, the new AI Atmosphere Match will quickly copy the mood, sky and general colors from an image you provide. All you have to do is upload the image you want and the AI will do the rest. So, for this, let's try an image with a completely different sky from what I have currently. So, I have here this image as a reference and now let's see how well it copies the mood of the image. First, I'll click on this icon on the top right corner to select the AI Atmosphere Match. Then, I'll click here to upload a new reference image. Now, I'll adjust my camera and then click Take Snap. Now, just click Generate and then Apply. As you can see, it applied a new style based on that reference image. Let's try again, but with a completely different line. So, I will upload this overcast image and let's see the magic happening. It applied a new HDRI and adjust the settings to a better match the reference. This could be a great starting point for your renders. But if you are not happy with the results, there's also D5 Studio. D5 Studio is a cloud workspace in D5 Render where you can keep your favorite presets and other resources to improve workflow and creativity. Right now, you can save effects, paths, and brush settings. Once you set one up, you just label it and drop it into your personal space. It makes things faster and easier. You can access D5 Studio in the upper left corner of the screen by clicking this icon. Now here, I will click the D5 Curated and browse through the scenes available. I'll select this one on the second page, Exterior Overcast Fog. Now, simply double-click on it to apply the settings. As you can see, now I have an overcast mood on my scene. Let's try this one, Exterior Sunny. Again, completely different sky. You can keep browsing these scenes until you find one that suits you. Or you can try and use Geo and Sky and their custom sun. The custom sun in Geo and Sky allows for adjusting and fine tuning the position and brightness as well as the sun disk radius. I'm setting mine to be with a clear midday sky and a bright sunny day. Here you can also find a section for clouds, which is great for those dynamic time lapse videos. 
Before you continue, if you want to take your rendering skills to the next level, I invite you to check out my D5 render course. I'll leave a link in the top right corner and in the description below. Now, another new feature that was released by D5 Render last year was the local exposure. You have now two new options in the exposure settings. Local exposure for highlights and shadows. As a result, the dynamic range of the image can be improved and the scene will be better balanced in terms of color and brightness, resulting in a more realistic result. The advanced camera tool allows for better placement and fine-tuning of several different cameras in your scene. You need to first activate this option by going to Preference and Widget. Now on the top, you will see a new icon for Advanced Camera Tool. Let's click on the top icon with the camera and now select Camera. First, you'll notice that you can move the camera around and rotate it, wherever you like. And there's a whole new menu on the right side with extra options to adjust. Besides controlling the exposure, the projection mode, there's a new feature called Aspect Ratio. Here you can define if you want to take a horizontal or vertical render, along with other aspect ratio formats. You can also define the render size, focal length and camera clipping plane. There is also nine different backdrop planes, which are images that can be used as a background for your 3D scenes. These backdrop images are useful in hiding the horizon line, which can make your scene look more realistic. To add these backdrop planes, go to Landscapes tab and then select the Backdrop Plane category. I will select this one and add it to my scene. Now it's just a matter of fine-tuning the position. You know how important it is to have all the maps for realistic material. So, now you just have to load the color map. I will simply drag and drop my texture into the material editor and then click on this button called AI Generated Texture Maps and let AI do its magic and create all the PBR materials for you. This is all integrated inside D5 Render. And well, textures are great, but we see a lot of repetition, right? And there's nothing worse in the render than noticing the repetition of a texture. Our eyes can spot this quite easily, and the result is a render that is not realistic. D5 Render got this fixed. All you have to do now is click on this button called UV Randomizer. And with just a click of a button, the texture is no longer repetitive. <laughs> Yay for realism! Now I'll keep adding textures to my model to make it more realistic. Now that the textures are done, it's time to add some models to this scene. I'll start with the terrain grass and I'll use the brush tool for this. I'll go to assets and I already have some assets I have favorite from D5 here. I'll select these four and then with the brush radius set to maximum, on the size I set to 01 and 03 maximum. I'll click one time on this area and boom, now you have immediately a nice grass on your terrain. Now I'll select these two for even better grass variation and set the density lower and the grass size to 01 and 01. Click again and you can see how this gives even better variation. For the other part of the terrain, I'm going to add a grass material because it's much lighter and this way my computer will not be screaming for help. And if with the grass assets you face some performance issues, you can always select the area where you have the grass and under brush, I will simply click on this eye icon to make them invisible. When I'm ready to make the final image, I can make them again visible. I will keep this setting for now, so it's not wasting resources. And last year, D5 Render has added more options for edge assets. The most significant improvement, in my opinion, is the ability to quickly and easily create edges for green walls by selecting all the assets that are named single. To create edges using this feature, simply select the desired assets and set the brush tool radius to maximum. Then, click on the surface you want to cover with edges, and that's it. <laughs> the selected assets will automatically fill the surface. This makes the process of creating edges or green walls a lot quicker and more efficient. But as you can see, there are some holes in it. 
we could still adjust the density, but in my case, I'm going to just add a grass material on the wall to help cover the edge. Now next is the path tool, which has seen some improvements in the last year. You can now choose between the curve and linear modes. Curve mode is the same as before, where you use a busier curve to create the path. But with linear mode, you can adjust the smoothness of each point individually. I will select a couple of trees that I would like to place on my scene and just set a path around here. There are also some changes to the path tool for vegetation assets. You can now set a fixed distance between the plants in meters and if I render will generate the right amount of assets based on that distance. Another great feature they added last year was the subsurface scattering material. This is a lighting technique used in 3D computer graphics and animation to create more realistic materials such as foliage, skin, wax and marble. Let's look at this image without subsurface scattering material. You can see the sun is not shining through the leaves. But now, if we add this material, you can clearly see this effect in action. The behavior is much more realistic. To add this material, you can simply select foliage under the material template. And then on the subsurface color, you can add a map that will give the information on how much the effect should be. And next is real-time caustics. Caustics is when light hits a shiny or see-through object like water or a glass and then creates bright patterns on spots on other surfaces. To enable this new feature, you need to have caustics enabled both on the material and on the light. Let's start by placing a point light on the scene. Now you'll find a new property called caustics. Activate it. On the new options, let's increase the intensity to the maximum to better visualize the effect. Next, press I on the keyboard and select the materials that will be influenced by the caustics effect. Just press the toggle to activate it. Now you can see this beautiful effect. And here's some before and after images with caustics. It makes a big difference. Defive Render keeps adding tons of new assets and there have been some improvements with the assets as well. For example, now there's a new parameter for car paint material for vehicle assets. You can customize clear coat opacity and clear coat intensity. Another new option is the HD filter on the online assets window. This way you can check only the assets that work great near the camera for higher detail. There's also support for displaying search history to view previous searches, added search suggestions, you can click on the tags to jump to the search results quickly. And there's also new procedurally generated vines. Now you can add these vines and adjust the settings to fit your design needs. You can find them under the nature category under vine. As you can see when placing them on the wall, it shows this blue leaf shaped decal. You can just press generate and scroll through the various vine designs it gives you. We already had water material for lakes, seas and pools, but now this new feature allows the simulation of materials such as waterfalls, running water, river streams and other types of flowing water you can imagine. For example, you can even add this material to simulate an open tap of water. There are a lot of improvements in the new video editor. Now you can add different clips into a single timeline and easily move them around. And along with a new camera tool, you can now render vertical video as well. Another thing D5 added was the camera animation templates. When you click on the video button, you will be able to see all these templates. You simply click on one of them and it will load this animation into the timeline. This is a super resolution algorithm developed by the D5 render team that speeds up image rendering. To turn on this feature, go to the top left corner and then go to Preference. Here, 
click on the widget on the left menu and enable the D5 SR image rendering beta. That's all you need to do. Now, every time you render an image, it will have this feature enabled. And next is the section tool. The section tool is like a magic knife that lets you cut a 3D model in half to see what's inside. You can enable it by first going to preference and then widget. Here you'll find the section tool and activate it. Now on the top, you'll find a new icon for the section tool. You can add a plane or a cube section. On the properties, you can define if you want to apply it to a specific layer or not, and you can toggle the option to fill in the edges with the color you define. Now, which of these features did you like most? Let me know in the comments below. And before you go, I invite you to check my video that shows you how to create this realistic exterior with D5 Render. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.